Okay, well, thank you, Lenny, and thank you for, for everyone for, uh, for the invitation to speak here. Um, I, was, I was listening to the discussion this morning with great interest and reflecting on why are we donors so rubbish? Um, and just to reassure you a little bit, and I'll come back to the reassurance at the end, the, the sort of programming we're talking about and the doing development differently can be done within different programs. There are some good examples. I've worked on a few of them. Um, I've worked in three different country offices. All of them have had some programming that sort of works in this kind of way. Um, but, and there is a but, it, it has up until recently mostly been below the radar um, and had to be done with some fairly unhelpful compromises in areas like log frames and sort of what, what results we measure and what really matters. So what, um, what I'm doing in my current role, which is in a, de in a department called the, the Better Delivery Department within DFID, um, is to, th this is a team that's been set up to try to improve our systems uh, to achieve a number of objectives, but one of those objectives is to create incentives to do more work, to do more programming which is adaptive, which works in some of the ways that we're describing. Um, bit of history of the Better Delivery Initiative, if you don't know it. it was, this was something that was started by uh, Pete Voles and Tom Wingfield, uh, among others, a few, uh, two or three years ago. Um, and it was really um, from a, came from a review of our program process, our program cycle, which um, identified some unintended consequences of a whole series of reforms that we'd put in place in DFID to improve our focus on results and on value for money, neither of which are bad things to focus on. But in the process of beefing up our systems for doing these things, we'd introduced new levels of rigidity, um, a lot of confusion around what was a rule, what was allowed and what wasn't. Um, and, and so the better delivery reforms have introduced a set of changes to try to re uh, resolve some of these unintended consequences. Um, the first thing we put in place was a clear set of rules called the SMART rules, which sets out in programs, these are the things you absolutely have to do. Um, and if it's not in the rules, then it's essentially up to your judgment. Um, the second um, element was a reform of our processes. Um, there was an effort to shorten the business case, the document that we have to do to get programs approved by ministers, which yeah, one of the conclusions of the review was we were spending far too long gold plating those. Um, partial success there. I think they got shorter for a while, then they gradually got longer again. Um, there, is, there was some um, reform, reviewed the process for what was required in terms of log frames. Um, once again, partial success there. And then we've done a lot of investment in people because one of the key parts of the reforms was trying to devolve responsibility for decision making on programs within DFID down to the level which had the best understanding of the context and what the program was trying to do. And that's a really important principle that I think we do still think is important. Um, and in doing that, we've done lots of investment in uh, a cadre of senior responsible owners that's kind of named individual responsible for each program um, and in program managers. So that those were the key elements of the reforms. I think, yeah, you know, looking at it three years on, I think it's job half done. Um, and particularly on um, adaptive programming. I think most of our business cases probably still do over-specify the program. They set out, you know, this is what 100% of the money will be spent on to deliver 100% of the results in 100% of the time. And there is more flexibility to, to depart from that as you go along, but that's probably not the ideal starting point. So there's a, there's a few of us now looking at how can we a little bit, be a little bit more honest in our business cases about what we know and what we don't know, where the uncertainty is and how we're going to manage that. Uh, that's, that's still work in progress. There is a review of our business case going on. Um, we're not, haven't really cracked um, a lot of issues on procurement, which came up this morning, uh, and particularly how do, you, um, how do you design terms of reference, how do you do contracts, how do you reimburse people for, in ways that incentivize doing development differently, and those, these ways of working. And I think we've still got some learning to do on measurement. You know, how do you measure whether these approaches are working or not? 
So there is some work going on that my team is doing with our procurement people, looking at, yeah, looking at some examples of how these programs have worked. Um, we've started to challenge their initial starting point, which I think was that um, the way to get more adaptive programming was payment by results. Um, I think now we're getting a slightly better understanding of which are the sorts of programs where payment by results work and which are the programs where they don't. Um, I think we, there is one sort of bit of work that we need to do on developing m m better and more case law on results frameworks that depart a little bit from the DFID standard log frame or how ways in which we've used the DFID log frame better um, to measure success in some of these programs. And I think there's, there's a very interesting bit of work going on, going back to something Lance said this morning about looking across our whole portfolios rather than individual programs and how they address some of these challenges better in a country. Um, so just to conclude, I think the, the message I want to leave with you is you have a lot of allies within DFID in wanting to work in this way. And I think there are some things, going back to a comment that was made this morning about working together, I think there are some ways that you can help sort of those of us in DFID who do believe that this is an important part of what we should be doing um, with good examples of what has worked. Of yeah, Where are the good examples of alternatives to standard log frames? Where are the good examples of where we've told a clear story about plausible contribution rather than attribution? Um, where do we have any really good indicators at output level of adaptation? so that we can measure whether partners are adapting or not. But, and also, this morning's session was great because I learned a lot about the sorts of things that we could do next to create the right incentives for our implementers to work in this way. So do keep the criti constructive criticism coming. Thank, Thank you. you.